this is Christine and Christine on Find Your Way Home. And we are going to talk again about a three book series from directionforourtimes.com. These are volumes, they're the prophetic volumes offered by them. And next week we're going to go into volume eight. And today we're going to read some messages from volumes five and seven because we are living in very interesting times and it seems to be that these prophecies, these prophetic words in these books, um, which come from locutions to a lay Franciscan who goes by the name Anne, Anne, comma, a lay apostle. This is private revelation. It's not incumbent upon the faithful to believe it. You do not have to. It is not part of the, what is called the deposit of faith. These volumes have already received the Nihil Obstat and the Imprimatur from the church. And so we have gotten so much out of it, have we not, Christine? You know, we talk about these all the time. And Christine and I were saying we could do like four or five or six shows on these. Uh, they are so rich. They're just so rich. And sometimes we don't want to do too many shows for you guys. But I've gotten a lot of feedback from viewers. And thank you guys for your feedback. And you say you, you wait for these shows to come out. This stuff feeds you like it's feeding Christine and me. So please consider buying these yourself read them and then share them with friends and family so that God's messages can get out to them as well. Yeah, so. this is called directionforourtimes.com. And um, yeah, I've heard from you that you'd rather watch cartoons, you know, than watch us. And so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to share with you, this has nothing to do with these books or the prophecies whatsoever. Therefore, I'm mentioning it. I was thinking, oh my gosh, Jesus, I... I sometimes grumble against you. You know my heart. You see inside, and that's so wrong. You're not at fault for anything. And I was just feeling the contrition of that and wanting to change. And and right when I was thinking this, I, of course, did an illegal thing by looking down at my phone while driving. And then this is what she sends me. <laughs> when you invite Jesus into your heart, but then he sees what's inside there, and it's a picture of Jesus looking aghast, a statue of him just over My daughter, my daughter was in a staff meeting with like 200 people, and she said it was a Zoom meeting, and she did the same thing. She goes, never look down at your phone when you're in a meeting. She said she literally, <laughs> and everyone looked at her like, what? She goes, nothing. Nothing, nothing. Jesus wants us to laugh and yes I, I often you know, thought you know who who is your funniest comedian somebody you think how do they come up with that they're so hysterical well Jesus came up with that first so he he's got to be a stitch God has to be just be. hilarious so well actually in the books we're reading today I don't know if you have it uh, measured one of the ones we're going to read today but one of the saints that spoke to Anne the lay apostle said heaven is fun and I cannot communicate to you how much fun do you remember which saint it was that said that um, I have no recollection whatsoever because I'm past it 50 was, it made me happy to go to hear that word because we hear serious we hear joyful we hear uh, to hear funny energy. yes I love oh, it yeah well she yeah. said fun she goes heaven is so much fun, fun. and I thought mm -hmm. that made me happy mm. so God's nice. got so much great Nice. Prepare for you guys. Yes, he does. And so we're going to start with volume seven here. I'm going to read a message because I think this is from St. Therese of the Little Flower. So Anna Lay Apostle, she gets in her locutions, which means she, in, in her heart, she hears specific words and writes them down. And all these volumes, many, many volumes, clearly can't come from her or just her imagination. There's something more going on here. So, St. Therese of the Little Flower said on July 5th, 2004, the time of darkness nears, and I think we can all who live with the Spirit of Jesus sense that things are darkening. People cling rebelliously to sinful ways and do not fear God's justice. Some have embraced evil. This world is no longer an appropriate place for God's children. And I think 
if you're a parent or you're an uncle or aren't you or you have youth in your life and you care for them so much you realize that you can't hand them a smartphone you can't have them just go out in the neighborhood and meet everybody and you you can't, you can't have them watch TV all the time. You can't because it's like handing, if you hand your kid a phone, you're literally allowing psychopaths on the other side trying to access them and show them images and change their thoughts and their morals and their behavior. That's literally yes. what is going on in our world. And who in the in the developed world does not have access to seeing a screen somewhere to to hearing a song somewhere um and it's and by and just large, driving down the road looking at a bill looking at a billboard not yeah. appropriate you know inappropriate inappropriate but uh humanity has been desensitized to the point of saying oh that's just that's just the way things are well that's not how jesus sees it so uh, she says, it's neither safe nor conducive to the school of holiness that each person must attend to graduate to heaven. So God would like this earth to be a school of holiness. Little souls cannot do this here in your world because they are surrounded literally by the opposite of holiness. I do not wish to tell you about the sins of humanity because there was sin in my day also. I understand that sin exists and that there will always be those who choose the enemy. What I'm trying to convey to you is that your world has begun to coexist with sin in such a way that few object anymore. You are asleep, children of the world. Where are God's warriors? Too few have taken up God's cause in the past, but many will now in these times. And so, um, dear brothers and sisters, I feel like I'm a I'm a honestly very weak instrument and you may feel the same way about yourself but he yes. needs he needs you he needs us whatever you can do whatever you can pray how however much more you can love and I also I I can't stress enough there's there's certain things that Christine and I cannot say um on YouTube our, our videos would be taken down so we're not going to um, but you're welcome to go to queenofpeacemedia.com and then you look on the menu bar on the top where it says banned videos and these are some of the things that you need to know right now right. for our time. Right. And Christine, do you mind reading uh, what Jesus said on uh, May 7th, 2004? Absolutely. Jesus says, the darkness swirls around my little ones, and many suffer in the greatest way from fear because they are the targets of the enemy. Children, hear me. Listen to me. Man cannot touch your soul. Your soul is your property of divine origin and protected by me. I wish to keep you at a heavenly level of existence during this time so that you will not nourish fears. Before the physical darkness comes, there will be many upheavals, some from heaven, it is true, but some from the evil of man. There will come a time when many souls will be without food. There will be famine, yes, and there has been famine before. During this time, though, there will be enough food, but the enemy will prevent it from being available to the people. You will expect this to happen, and you will say, our Lord spoke of this time and we have nothing to fear. I will guide you and direct you with great specificity when this occurs. Well, thanks for, thank you, Jesus. You must be brave then and proclaim my word with even greater zeal. You are my messengers. You carry the light within and this light will not be extinguished. Let your family be one who would choose to be hungry before relinquishing my light to the enemy. For it is this that may be asked of you. Now, would you mind sharing, because you shared with me in person, I think it's, it's very alarming. And should this be of God? Should this be true? 
it, it does mesh with some predictions of the global elite who seem to be wanting to take over and have appointed themselves kings of and queens of the world. Uh, unelected officials who have a, a right. great reset plan that is not what they purport it to be. Um, you will own nothing and you will be happy. That means they own right. everything. Um, an, an AI and those who have recently purchased 80,000 acres of farmland, right now it's been done. It's yeah, some, some say uh, the, the Gates Foundation has purchased one third or one half of all U.S. farmland. Um, the, the tentacles of, of these powerful people is extensive business, food, <laughs> um, medicine, you name it. It's, um, it's a technocracy. It's an artificial intelligence design, right. starting with our phones, leading to, to more types of control and surveillance. And, and all of these things are happening at a rapid pace and have been planned for a while. And it's in one of these messages that we're going to read to you. It's an attempt to bring us into a godless void is what Jesus calls mm. it, a godless void. So in this, there's going to be a time and, and these messages help us realize that this is a saint making time. And I wanted you to share. Right. It's horrendous to think that there's food out there and we can't access it. And and there has been famine before jesus was hungry we know this uh if if nothing else we can remember that for 40 days and 40 nights he had no food and, or water or water or water and in so in the desert that makes in it the worse. desert that makes 100 it degree heat and yeah. he survived but when we talk there's this this caution we want to make sure that we're not scaring you that we're not giving you too much heaviness and yet we are being called by god to say speak truth but then i have been looking at this and i've literally been getting excited and and i want you to get excited because we can look at the darkness that's coming and fear and we can look at the good <laughs> christine i didn't say this to you but I, here's an analogy that comes to me when i gave birth at, and you women will get this, right? No sports analogies. We can do birth, right? When I gave birth to my first child, every single labor pain that came, I was young, I was immature, I was inexperienced. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, here comes another labor pain. I'm never going to survive. And it was painful. And so when I felt another one coming, I'd freak out. Three years later, when I gave birth to my second child, I changed that up. I said, you know what? I'm going to have a labor pain and I'm going to get through it. So every time a labor pain would come, I'd be ready, I'd feel it, I'd endure it, it hurt. But then I'd go, one less labor pain. And each labor pain that came, it changed my mind, it changed my thinking, my whole perception. I was like, I'm one labor pain closer to this baby. And guys, that was tremendously different for both, both uh, labors and delivery. So when we're reading this stuff on Jesus, and Christine has a heavy heart too, because she loves you so much, and. She like, I doesn't want to scare you. And so I said, Christine, this doesn't scare me anymore. When I first started fasting, I remember whole Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, you know, all year. You're like, oh, my God, I'm going to hate it. And those whole days, I dreaded it. And I'm thinking, oh, my poor stomach. And now, because of where the Lord's been taking me, I started fasting. I I don't even like saying this out loud because God says not to tell people, but every Wednesday I will go without food at all. And so I'm fasting. And now that I've been doing that for a significant period of time, I don't dread it. I'm actually like, okay, I'll get through it. I'll wake up Thursday morning. We'll come. I'll eat. It's fine. And then I wanted to add fasting to that. So I'm looking at other days of, okay, I can, I can fast in this way or that way. But the point of what this is, is as you get used to it, you realize God's got this. It doesn't, I mean, it still hurts to the degree that you can offer it up, but you manage it because God is asking you to do it. So this, these messages we are sharing with you are saying, let's not focus on the hard parts, but let's focus on the, the part that Jesus keeps saying, but don't fear. I got great stuff for you on the other side of that labor pain. One thing you were saying to me that I thought was so powerful was that fasting has helped you go forward without fear and that you actually the more 
the more you entered into the idea of not having food, the more you accepted it. The more you entered into th- not blocking it off, not denial, but saying, okay, what would I do if I were hungry? Okay, this is how I would spiritually and emotionally handle it. And, and, and a thought came to me just as you were speaking, which w- also gave me great consolation is, okay, yes, I would probably go to a point saying, you know, Jesus, please send manna, please. And, and I right. believe he will. I believe there, if I there comes too. a time when he wants his people to survive a certain period or in a certain place, he will send. He's done it before. He can do it again, whatever type of manna he wishes to right. send. But if it is my time to go or if it is my family's time to go, I believe that there will be a strength there that says, as you said, get through this labor pain to have the next meal. That's one way to think of it. Or get through this labor pain to say, I just might be entering paradise. And so no matter what it is, whether it's a morsel or whether it's eternal life, those it's are, neither one is a bad thing. And that awaits a believer who's truly trying to purge their sins, who's truly trying right. to, who truly believes. And so hence this power of belief, We're going back to that first message that we put on the screen, this is what's so beautiful. Jesus is saying, your soul is your property. No man, woman, nobody on earth can touch it. It's mine. It's yours. It's Christine's. It's that is not something that anybody with the a, evil one can't touch it. Not if he, he, not unless the you evil let one him. Can't touch it. Not unless you right. let him. The, the only opening he has is if we allow it to be. Granted, there are two ways that evil enters. One is through trauma, and God always tries to heal that. Any of us who've been traumatized by abuse or by something that's not our fault, there could be a wound there in which evil pierces itself and all God God knows that's not our fault and he works at healing and he helps to heal us or it's through our sin those are two ways and so and in that way we're culpable right whatever it is the healing is something that God is poised and ready and prepared to give us when it comes to our souls and the complete healing of our souls is heaven. Does it mean that the most holy person on earth looks perfect? No, I personally believe that the holiest people on earth are Down syndrome people. You know, maybe they might not That's a whole radio show right there. That's a whole radio show. But also going to this second message. Now, look at this. Look at what the Lord says. He's preparing us. He says, our Lord spoke of this time and we have nothing to fear, right? Nothing to fear. That there's peace even in that. And then he says, I will guide, and and he allegedly says, of course, we're not claiming to know that this is God. We happen to personally believe it is. You can believe or deny it, whatever you wish. You're free to accept or reject. What we believe he says is, I will guide and direct you with great specificity when this occurs. Once again, that means praying and fasting now to be a person who can be guided by the Lord with great specificity. If we're in fear and flailing, it's very hard for him to guide us. He's told me that personally recently. Why don't you listen? You, I can't work through you like I want to. It's a very painful thing to hear from the Lord. So, mm. so let's work on it now. And specificity is so important because how many people have said, I, I'm listening to God. I would walk on coals if, if I knew it was what God wanted. I've prayed that prayer. So that, again, gives me excitement and peace going, wow, I am going to hear God so clearly with such specific detail, like turn left, stop, take three paces, then look down, you'll see the man. I mean, I'm just so excited going, thank you. He just takes away all the blockages that come for me because all the obstacles yeah, are if you want Yeah, if you want to see what fearlessness looks, look at that face right there. There she is. So then she said, okay, this is amazing. You, you, let's say you're hungry. You have, you have the possibility of no food right in front of you. Uh, if you don't want, do probably, I imagine this happening in part for those who don't do what the global elite tell them to do in a, in a controlling situation. Um, and it says, you must be brave then and proclaim my word with even greater zeal. Now, I can't imagine that. I can imagine myself going, mm. I just want a piece of bread. <sighs> 
And I just I'm want like, a I cookie. Have a, I want to have a headache. <laughs> I gave up cookies 10 years ago, so that'll be in heaven. And Dove chocolate bars. Cheese but that's it. You're never cheese. I stick. digressed. Yeah, <laughs> mozzarella. I mean, I don't know what I'll be thinking. Probably more along those lines. He's saying, no, what I really require of you and I'm asking of you is to be, proclaim my word with greater zeal. Yes. Wow. Uh, so. You know, we're, you're in an automatic fast that automatically raises your spiritual awareness. And then and then you are my messengers. You carry the light within you and this light will not be extinguished. Let your family be one who would choose to be hungry before relinquishing my light to the enemy. For the, it is this that may be asked of you. So he's saying literally we, we may come across in our lifetime this option. So to know yes. that ahead of time, I believe, can fortify us to make the right decision. Um, we don't want to choose our body over our soul. We don't want to choose what's impermanent over what's permanent. And what I'd like to add is one of the other messages in this book, um, I believe it might be book eight, so we're not mentioning that mes message today, is children are purer vessels. And so the children will better understand famine as it pertains to Christ, you know, assuming you are working to uh, educate your children, raise them up, expose them to God. So I, 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 this is a personal belief is based on what I've read in these books that your children, if you say we're doing this for God, will get it um, better than I think you think they will. So don't be afraid if you have small children. I think the Lord is doubly passionate with them and they'll be going, okay, mommy, I'm, I'm, I got this. I'll do this for yeah, Jesus. Yeah, if you, if you tell them, look, you got nothing to fear. Jesus is taking care of you. It's going to be here or heaven. Don't even worry about it. A kid who trusts you with your word, if you say it with great confidence, is more likely yes. to say, okay, mom, okay, dad, than, <laughs> than your husband who says, you're nuts. I never believed this anyway. No, um, <laughs> hopefully, you know, that will not happen. But it, it is. But they have a clearer connection to their angel. They have a clearer connection to Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and we close their mm -hmm. pathway. So, you know, allowing them to... to I'm just saying, don't worry about your children. God loves you and he loves them, but he has a special place for the kids. He's going to doubly. Absolutely. Take care and of when that. that happens, hopefully there won't be any cell phones in their hands. And, and we're going to close for a break, but I'm t I hope you understand that uh, we're really serious when we talk about yeah. the cell phone issue. My two boys have been uh, ruined by it. And one has converted wholeheartedly and the other is, is on a path of conversion. And we, we came to realize uh, the older one can now do it and, and is, is very holy and restricts himself. But uh, that's very rare and, and you can't count on that. In fact, you should assume that someone can't. And honestly, I've come to the personal belief that they should not have these devices in their hands right they should not right. have these devices and especially now that things are going to get very dicey in terms and of ugly ugly in terms of what's going to be suggested um offered um unfiltered unfiltered it's it's not hardly any of it's any good all we've ever needed is a phone uh, we don't know how to talk to each other. People are breaking up online. And um, the average age of a kid being exposed to pornography is 11. And 100% of the time, unless they are told otherwise and taught about it and have all these restrictions and support and prayer around them, they'll go back to it. So that's just one, one issue. Um, yeah. There are many other issues, so please uh, be aware. It, it'll be the biggest fight of your life, and they won't like you anymore, but you could save a soul, uh, take it out of their hands. So yeah. you are listening to Find Your Way Home with Christine and Christine, and we'll be right back. <laughs> We are now returning to Find Your Way Home with Christine Wilkins and Christine Bacon. Welcome back. We are talking about messages, alleged messages from Jesus and some of the saints through direction for our times, which are locutions allegedly given to a woman who's called Anne, a lay apostle. And we are looking at a message right now on May 7th from Jesus. And would you... Do the honors of reading that one. Sure. 
It is time, or I would not allow this to happen. The darkness draws too many. It must end. You will pray for it to end, and many of you have prayed for it to end. This is the manner in which we will eradicate its hold over the world. It is painful for you to witness, but you will be well rewarded. Praise me in everything you see. When you see goodness maligned and persecuted, when you see goodness labeled as evil, when you see goodness persecuted and punished, then you must thank me because it is then the time draws nearer. You have been chosen to witness these times. Do not wish yourself anywhere else because I have selected you carefully. All is well. Your God assures you all is well. Oh, gives me great peace. You're so wonderful. I, I, I think this is a beautiful message of challenge, no? Yes. I, I, um, I'm being challenged right now. I'm not sure in learning of some things that are going on in the world and that the media is censoring or not, or lying about outright, just lying over and over and over again. I cannot say that I have responded with thanksgiving. <laughs> I cannot say that I have, and he, and here it is, right. this great challenge. The gospel always challenges us, and anything that aligns with God's word, uh, this aligns with the scripture, Philippians 4, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice, rejoice. for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, and um, praise him in everything. Praise him in everything you see. What? What a fantastic way to suck it to Satan and give glory to God. Yes. And, and then it's saying when you see goodness persecuted, and that will continue and get worse, we're told. And thank him. Yes, thank him. And then it is then that the time draws nearer. You have been chosen to witness these times. Now, these, this is a message that came out in 2004. So that's very interesting, though, because I can imagine uh, some of you might be thinking, well, how, are they, how do they know? Why are they saying that this is us? They could, this could be, you know, two, three, ten generations from now. Well, I don't know. I mean, if, if we're going to follow what these words say. Well, I know. Well, it says you have been chosen to witness these times. So interesting, no? Exciting. Interesting. Yeah. That, what the, that's exciting. It's like saying, I pick you, I commend you, you are special, this is a tough time, and you are made for this. And that's exciting. To say, like, me? You picked me? And he's saying, yeah, because I believe in you. Every single one of you watching this, I'll say this, read my lips, right? <laughs> Jesus picked you with whatever skills you have, whatever talents you have, whatever weaknesses and flaws you have. He gave you the heart you have because he knew you could handle it. So he picked you. So praise God. Yeah, I think uh, I'm called to reiterate what she's saying. He decided that you should be born into this time. And you may feel ill-equipped. You may feel like you were born into the wrong family, adopted by the wrong family, the wrong person, the wrong time, that everything is wrong. And I think that that's a, a spirit that we're all being um, attacked by to say that you're wrong, the times are wrong, things are not right. If only you lived somewhere else, if only you had a or different life. Or to be life. scared. Yes, be to be, be what scared we and be terrified, right? It's the only message on TV. Be scared. Oh. You could be one of those that gets the virus. Be, be scared. scared. You could be scared. You might need two doses. You might need three. Be, be scared. scared. And you're going to have to. Your grandma. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Be scared. Yeah things start letting up the messages of fear ramp up no yes it, it's not um there's not it's not going to let up folks uh well, it's oh. not going to come to a time where the media will say let's provide the good news no it's not going to be like that and so another reason turn off the tv get rid of the smartphone love one another and so think about the fact that you've been chosen specific gifts you have specific people will be put in your path the the people who are put in 
our paths are people we're called to love, even if they're difficult to love, the ones who disagree, the ones who don't even like you. Um, everything is for a reason and a purpose each day. And, uh, you know, I, it's a little bit daunting to think about, but we're going to be shown either in something called an illumination of conscience or at the end of our lives, all those times we just disregarded somebody or walked by them on the subway or thought, you know, I don't care for that person anymore. Each person, even if they're seemingly unlovable, is someone we're called to love, is someone we're called to pray or speak into the life of Christ. And so this is something to to revive within ourselves. And Jesus is basically saying through one of these messages, yeah, you can do this when you're hungry. Yeah, you can do this when you're persecuted. Yeah, you can do this when you see the world falling apart. My light is still in you. You are my light. You are my light. And the great saints, of course, have, have paved the way for us. Saint Maximilian Kolbe in a concentration camp we you know we we really don't have an excuse even though we would like one and then what's wonderful with these volumes is we have these saints who had the same trials the same troubles as we did and uh, let me let me read for you going into the next one from saint andrew the apostle and he says because you live in dark times you might have difficulty imagining a world where the church leads the majority who truly wish to serve god brothers and sisters this is your destination despite the rockiness of the road you will travel you will ultimately see the church triumphant when mm. i walked the earth i knew that god would always triumph over evil i was told this and i believed it with my whole heart in my humanity however I experienced times when my belief nearly became submerged beneath the forces of evil that pressed in on me. When you face a situation in which all seems lost and your very faith is wavering, you must cry out to heaven, we are all there with you. And then, souls of the earth, this is St. Andrew, I am your brother. I experienced great trials for the church. Many of us here shed blood for the church. What we are watching now is not pleasant and that this church we sacrificed our lives for with such conviction is barely defended. The attacks against God's church are constant. This is always the way, of course, because the enemy roams. But never has there been such a time when the attacks strike into the very heart of God's church with only the barest of replies, and sometimes no reply at all. This is not moral courage, brothers and sisters. And he continues, what he says after that is that he would just be infused with the greatest courage. He says that he would be just trembling in his bootstraps, not knowing what to say. And then he would call on Jesus and then suddenly whoop, he was filled up with intense courage and was able and people marveled at where it came from. And how did he become that after, you know, feeling like a little worm? So that is a, I love it because that is available to all of us you now. And he said all he had to do was ask for it once and it was immediate and he just then he had the courage to do anything but he knew the courage wasn't him it was god and and that's what saint andrew is asking he's saying just ask be ready you will have it god's not going to say face all these enemies and then he's going to leave us hanging he's like you're going to experience this amazing holy spirit filling you in ways that you never have rejoice in that and, and you know, this whole thing points to the darkest times in my life. The the most recent dark situation I dealt with was an estrangement with a family member. Mm -hmm. But it was because of that estrangement mm -hmm. that I got to this spiritual depth with God that I am mm -hmm. currently at, which is nowhere near where I want to be or hope to be. But that's another thing God is saying. If I'm allowing you to experience this, just know that the outcome is even better and all of you watching this know this was your darkest days made you more intimate with god than ever before so you know again when christine and i were talking i was like christine i'm just more and more excited i don't have fear like i used to 
Um, and I don't think we should be afraid of telling our viewers, be excited. You are so blessed to be born in this day and time. Yeah, I mean, I think I think God is giving us Christine here, Christine Bacon, uh, to be cheerleader. a light. Yeah, cheerleader. <laughs> Um, cause my gosh, you know, what is, what is a greater beautiful thing than light in the darkness? And uh. I know, and, and I, I feel consoled by these messages because it's alerting us to some of the things that are on the way. And one of the things that Jesus is alerting us to is that there are going to come and they can be lessened, but they can't be averted. And this is another right. thing that you're going to see Christine Bacon cheer on. Sorry. And, and you're going to be like, is she just a little good? She in that case? The chastisements. Yeah. Woohoo! We've been looking forward to those. Those are in um, officially church-approved apparitions of Our Lady. For instance, in Akita, Japan, she said some really shocking things. She said uh, that fire will come to earth and descend and the, the living will envy the dead. Oh, my gosh. Are we not looking forward to that one? You know why, Christine? I'm not looking at the labor pain anymore. I'm looking at what's coming after. And, and it says so in the Bible, fix your eyes upon what is good, what is pure, what is holy. Amen. Fix your eyes upon these things. Amen. Like Peter looked at the water, he sunk. When he kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on water. He is not God. He is not spirit. Yes. Peter is a real yes. dude with flesh like us. And he walked yes, on water because he kept his eyes fixed on Christ. That's why I'm getting excited. It's like something snapped in me going, I'm yeah. done worrying. Satan isn't going to have me. I'm yeah. done. I got Jesus, and you guys do too. I love Don't look it. at the labor pain, look at the baby. Yes, okay. God is only sending them to save the most souls that he can. Uh, we've pushed him into this. He would never do it otherwise. It's like a parent yeah. saying, ah, oh, you know, I told you not to put your hand in the light socket, and now I actually have to smash the light socket because you yeah. didn't let me do it through a means of gentle mercy you made me have to actually crush the light socket so that you wouldn't touch it so that's i just made that up but i think that's a decent analogy yeah. my hand is gonna and blister i'm not gonna I i'm to not gonna this. allow you to hurt yourself and i'm not gonna allow you to hurt others anymore i want your soul in heaven with me right. and even if that means that i have to allow your body to not keep doing what it's doing which is sinning if i have to just stop that i will stop it because i need you to be with me for an eternity and one of the things that he's very very stern about that we're really not listening to especially um with the way things are have moved in the u.s it's i'm very sorry to say and and christine and i talked about this before the show whenever we mention a sin um, there's so many different ones, right? Uh, but Jesus in these volumes does mention a couple ones specifically. In the next episode, we'll we'll mention yet another yes. one that greatly grieves his heart. But, um, you know, my husband's been through abortion. I have several friends who have. I could have easily had several abortions. So God doesn't condemn. And if you've been through abortion, God loves you. If you've repented and you've gone to confession, he's forgiven everything and, and all is well. The only way it's not good is if it continues and people don't repent. And, and when it comes to chastisements, he says people are going to not see them the way he would wish. They're going to blame him once again. And yeah. this is what he says in this message. Jesus again made reference to the slaughter of abortions. He said, when chastisements befall the earth, the evil people who are choosing darkness move from ridiculing God and mocking him to cursing him. They say, in effect, look how cold and hateful God is to allow this to happen. So souls who don't love him will, um, will mock him, or if they never believed him in the first place, there'll be even more reason not to believe in him at all. Mm. How could a God allow such things so either God is horrible or God doesn't exist? And, and we see that already, right? And he, and he says yeah. that kind of callous attitude will become worse. And would you please read what he says um, on July, July 9, 9, 2004? Yes. In response, I would like to say that at least I have given these souls a chance to live and an opportunity to make their decision to serve heaven or not to serve heaven. Unlike current humanity, 
who slaughters the innocents before they are even fully formed. Who is the evildoer, I ask you? You will have these answers, Anne, because I am placing them in your heart. The slaughtered souls do not suffer in their eternity in response to your unasked question. They are given opportunities to earn holiness here with me. I am all justice. It is your world who suffers because these individuals had purposes. Your humanity rejected their brothers and sisters, refusing to make room for them in their selfishness. Woe to you, selfish ones. I am returning. So there we have the Jesus who is not happy. <laughs> He's not happy yeah. with the current trends, and he wants it to stop. And so certain things were never meant to be introduced into the world, never meant. And you know what's interesting? This very wise quote um, that I heard from the director of the San Francisco Symphony. And he said, for years and years of years, we've said to progress and to innovation and to technology, yes keep going, learn more, do more, create it, make it happen, make it possible. And we've come to a certain point in human evolution and in innovation where we need to start saying no. Right. We can do this medically, we can do that with artificial that intelligence, we can affect human minds, we can, but are we supposed to? And we see that it is those who are non-believers usually who've taken on an atheistic concept of our human existence who wish to recreate what it means to be human and if you just read the great reset book by klaus schwab you'll see that there's this godless void that jesus talks about that souls of the earth are trying to inflict and say you know this is right here in this message on may 10th 2004 the enemy of all that is good and holy and true these souls of darkness seek to impose on your world a godless void so i we see this occurring these ideas that we're supposed to be melded as human beings with artificial intelligence that um we are not created in the image of god that a way to create better beings is to <laughs> fuse us with technology and that that is not god's will and that is not god's plan and the idea is to make us excited about this excited about the innovations and the possibilities and uploading a video game in 16 seconds as opposed to 18 seconds is somehow <laughs> going to be a fantastic achievement but it it actually is a, a means of of enslaving us and controlling us and spying on us and, and all these wonderful, horrible things behind the scenes. It's not about love. It's not about freedom. It's not about the autonomous individual being able to create their own destiny through following God's will. It's about creating a society and a mindset that disregards who God created us to be and imposes a godless void. So our prayers, our fasting, our living our lives as disciples is the best thing we can do to combat this, praying together, loving one another. These are vital and necessary weapons. Um, if we don't love, if we don't repent, what happens on a global level is that we, we let the demons roam. Every time we repent, every time we go to confession, every time we go to mass, every time we, we change ourselves and turn over our hearts into love, we change the world, not just ourselves. So I think people think, well, why does, why does he harp on abortion? That only affects that one little center. Why does he harp on, you know, video games and violence? Because it unleashes all of this stuff. Anytime we sin, whatever the sin is, whenever I sin, I invite a demon to roam around. And he's not affecting just me, he's affecting other people. We do not live in a vacuum. 
So right. the converse of that is how powerful we are in through prayer and fasting and receiving the sacraments. We blast these demons back to hell where they belong, and we fight against this in ways that we know not of. We are so powerful. So I'd like to close with a prayer and um, invite you, the listener, you, the viewer, to reap the positivity that God is giving us and the saints are giving us in these messages and in the scriptures because he has a plan and he's chosen you and yes. you are to fight with love and he has already told us he's going to win so be part of that victory be part of that victory lord jesus thank you so much for the chance to speak the chance to listen the chance to be together in friendship and to be able to expound upon what you are saying to us in these times in which we live. Lord Jesus, I ask you to bless abundantly every listener, to bless their families, to bless their lives, and Lord, take their concerns and their worries upon yourself as you love to do, and in return, Give them a double dose of hope, of peace, of joy, of confidence that your promises are real and in you they have nothing to fear. This is Christine and Christine. God bless you. May you find your way home. <laughs>